here you are. Standing before me, well armored, formidable, fearless, fellow heavies. The Emperor FV has ravaged our maps, besieging each bush from here to Live Oaks. And now, you stand on a precipice, but the time has come to get back to the path we abandoned long ago, and to restore the good name of Heavy Tanks. We entrust this mission to the one who can hardly tell good from evil. The one whose name is 60TP Lewandowskiego. Let's start with the obvious. If you are watching this video, the chances are high that you play World of Tanks. If you play World of Tanks, the chances are high that you like tanks. With all this taken into consideration, we can speak frankly and admit that the 60TP Lewandowski Go looks nothing but terrific. Its hull long, its sides hollowed, an awe-inspiring X on its front. Every detail of this mighty beast reminds of the true power of Polish hussars. Its brutality can be measured in wild wolverines, but most importantly, it clearly stands out from other vehicles. Other tanks are just tanks. The 60TP is Mr. Olympia. He occasionally skips legs, but that's okay, because so does everyone. Especially the cheeky one over there. Indeed, in terms of dynamics, the pole has lots in common with the T-57 Heavy. The same top speed of 35 km per hour. The power to weight ratio is almost identical, which leads to a very similar driving experience. But even more, it's dynamically related to the IS-4. But first, who the hell remembers the way the IS-4 moves whatsoever? And second, it's not about dynamics. Yes, the pole doesn't look like a sprinter. It looks more like a tank boasting a lower glassy plate of 400 millimeters at least. And, of course, it's not true. The only advantage of the lower glassy plate is its small size. As for the rest, it's good old cardboard, easily penetrated by, well, anyone. There's more to it. The plate is only half the trouble because Right under this plywood hides the ammo rack. And this is what it means. There is something wrong about its upper plate too. Yes, it's sloped as hell. And it's thick well enough, too. So what's the catch? Let's have a closer look. What's the very first thing you'll try to hit? Well, of course. The very construction and appearance of the upper glassy plate literally provoke us to shoot right at those weak spots. Not here. Not here, either. Yes, the thinnest part. Ah, geometry. You can be cruel sometimes. Still, the 60TP looks so impressive for a good reason. It was the head that this muscle-bound trained with unabated zeal. Whether it's excessive studying or too much thinking, you decide where he got that frontal bone. But the fact is that the 60TP boasts an incredibly solid turret. Of course, it has its own weak spots. But the commander's cupola is hardly bigger than a couple of granny's pancakes. It's easier to hit the bullseye than the strip under the turret. As for the other weak spots, there are some as the armor thickness changes constantly. The rest is, to put it mildly, impenetrable. 
Perhaps it would sound less fearsome had it not been for one factor. The gun depression is minus 8 degrees. The gun barrel is moving down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. It's always had such a huge gun? No kidding. So it was there all the time. It's simply colossal. I mean, just look at it. It's longer than other tanks, even in the team panels. It looks really intimidating. Why such a sledgehammer? The answer is clear as daylight. Millimeters are what matters. Here are the most powerful guns of the world's heavies. Their caliber is 152 millimeters at most, while the pole features a caliber of 152.4. So who's the boss now, huh? How about that? Well, okay, I might be wrong. But jokes aside, let's see the facts. It's true that the Pole's gun boasts the biggest caliber, and not without reason. This gun has long been waiting for a great warrior. At last, the time has come to deal damage. The 60TP Lewandowski Go is able to reap 750 hit points off an enemy tank with just one shot. Yes, you heard me right. 750. Just imagine how it feels to count the damage you cause in 750s. Bang. Minus 750. Bang again. Half a mouse is gone. A few more bangs and the enemy is heading to the garage. The 60TP dominates over enemies. And it's not the Alpha that accounts for this. No. Nor does the cast iron turret. Nor even the superb gun depression. It's the combination of these three factors that makes the pole so dominant. Just come to think of it, you've taken a fine position. You peer into the enemy's soul. The enemy shoots and... And at this moment, at this very short moment, when the enemy has already shot and you're still aiming, the enemy moves backwards. But he's already got it. And at this very moment, you get it too. The 60TP is fearless. Mediums, heavies, TDs, the pole fears nobody. The only thing to be considered is the price of this bravery. Basically, it's the only thing that matters to the pole because if stakes are high, this tank will confront even the most menacing beast. Yes, the 60TP Lewandowski Go is not ideal. It won't become the heavy tank of your choice. Some will say it lacks all-round armor protection. Some will question the ammo rack placement behind the lower glassy plate. Some will claim that the penetration rate is insufficient. Even the pole's owner may sometimes cry out, move it roach in a fit of temper. It's something else that matters. The 60TP is charismatic. A couple of shots and decent damage caused. A proper position will save your turret intact. And in a truly great battle, the pole is sure to perform brilliantly. Because for as long as there's a monster in the enemy ranks, there's a job for the 60TP.